Greetings, everyone. Dave Yeski here, and I just want to thank you for uh, choosing to spend a, a, an hour, better part of an hour with us on, on what we think is going to be some fun and, and useful tips. Um, you know, so much of what we do uh, has a technical edge to it, whether we're talking about a financial planning strategies, uh, things like, you know, things like planning for college or planning for retirement, uh, or for that matter, economics. You know, so far during the pandemic, we've actually had three different uh, pandemic economic, or I should say pandemic economics webinars, all of which have been recorded, by the way, and I think uh, all of which are still relevant. If you're interested in, in diving into what's been happening on the monetary and fiscal policy front. But today we have something that's much more fun and um, is hopefully going to give you a few ideas. I know as we brainstorm this, I picked up some new ideas, you know, for how we can save time, keep ourselves maybe a little bit more uh, entertained during our lockdown, and uh, maybe just also just a little more at peace with this crazy world of 2020. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren Morellis. Thanks, Dave. All right, everyone. So before we dive into our collection of Live Big Life Hacks, we want to begin with our definition of a life hack to ensure that we are all on the same page as we continue through the presentation. So the definition we will be using is a life hack is any trick, shortcut, skill, or novelty method that increases productivity that increases productivity and improves your health, happiness, and or relationships. So in other words, we're gonna be presenting what we think are some creative ways to efficiently pursue your live big life. We've got 25 hacks to share with you. Um, and at the end of the presentation, we're going to provide a live big life hacks resource guide, which is going to include links to articles, services, products, and more that we'll be sharing uh, throughout the presentation. So you don't have to take notes We'll get you all those links at the end of the presentation. And so without further ado, I will kick it off to Yusuf, who's going to dive into our first set of life hacks. Thank you, Lauren. And before we dive into those hacks, we're going to start with a poll um, and ask each of you to answer this question. What is more valuable to you, time or money? As we're going through and receiving responses, you'll note that we did not cheekily include the option to say that time is money. Um, you either have to choose one or the other or simply punt and say that you can't choose. And it looks like many of you have indicated that saving time is more valuable than saving money, uh, which is fascinating and interesting because many of the slides that we'll be going over today are going to focus on uh, how to save time, how to make the most of your time, how to maximize the time that you're spending. Uh, although uh, the first slide <laughs> does, in fact, have a focus on uh, spending money. So, love it, or Lord, if we could take it to that slide, let's, uh, let's do that. So, with respect to saving money, we have three specific hacks, or three specific themes that we're going to be focusing our comments on and, and sharing a few hacks um, within each of those realms. First off, there are ways to get more out of every dollar that you spend. Um, one of the resources that we share in the guide is a link to the points guy, uh, a site where a gentleman or maybe a team, it's not really clear, uh, offer lots of ways to make sure that you're maximizing on the benefits offered by your credit cards, uh, that you're getting the most points based on the places that you're spending money, uh, and so on. So ensuring that your dollar is going as far as it possibly can, and then using the rewards ultimately to um, enhance your spending capability uh, by taking advantage of those benefits and uh, getting more of what you want or need. The 
middle item here on the slide, taking advantage of birthday rewards, this was a fun one to do a bit of research on. Uh, as many of you know, many companies offer freebies just for turning a year older. Starbucks has free drinks. Uh, Cold Stone has free scoops of ice cream. And there are any number of other companies that you can uh, take advantage of offers uh, that, that would stand to, or stand to give you a benefit just for having turned a year older. The resource guide that we're sharing with you has two links to two pretty exhaustive lists. Um, the crazy coupon lady uh, provides 100 different options that you can uh, take advantage of. Her branding, not ours. Um, and then there's another list with the top 149 freebies that one can take advantage of uh, simply for having uh, reached another year of life. So we'll share those with you. Um, and lastly, there's no hack here uh, with respect to putting your finances on pilot or no one way rather to put your finances on autopilot. But we'll share a brief story that's uh, timely. Many of our clients have gone through the, um, the uh, exercise of refinancing their student loans throughout the pandemic. Um, interest rates are as low as they can be. And one of the benefits to putting your student loan payments on auto pay is that you get an additional discount. In addition to benefiting from the lower rate, setting up the payments on auto pay, you get an additional couple percentage points uh, of a discount. And many other um, obligations can be satisfied by auto pay with the benefit of a discount. So we thought you'd, we'd bring your awareness uh, to that. Uh, next slide, Maureen. All right, so for all of you who mentioned that saving time was more valuable, uh, let's first talk about a few ways that we identified that you can get more out of your time. Um, the image on the bottom left corner is of a smart plug. You may be wondering what a smart plug is. Uh, the benefits of a smart plug are best illustrated by a story uh, that I can share with you. So smart plugs allow you to control any electronic device um, that's plugged into said smart plug via an app on your phone. Um, and so in spending much more time than normal at home, I've noticed that some of my roommates uh, have the habit of leaving lights on in rooms that they are not in. Uh, and so the concept of a smart plug has become really exciting to me. I think I may be investing in a few uh, because if I realize that a light is still turned on or suspect that a light may be turned on in a room that I'm not in or that no one is in, uh, would give me the chance to pop that light off without having a confrontation about it. Um, the next image here is of a webcam light or a light that you would use as a supplement to any lighting that you have in the room where you're taking all your Zoom calls uh, or attending webinars like this uh, where you may be sharing your webcam. Uh, we've all become acutely aware of um, how we look when we're on camera uh, as a result of how we're connecting with others throughout the pandemic. And so we actually share with respect to each of these two devices, both the smart plug and the webcam light in our resource guide, a list of the top available options uh, for each. And so hopefully if you're interested in either of those devices, you'll find those lists of the best options in either category, uh, a helpful tool uh, to, to select one. Moving right along to the dual monitor, uh, you know, before many of us are working from home these days, and, and before that was the normal, uh, many of us maybe commented that they could never work from home because you couldn't give up your two screens. Can't get any work done without having two screens if that's what you're used to at work. Um, we actually also provide in the resource guide a list of the best auxiliary monitors or portable monitors that you might want to take advantage of. Uh, and so if you find yourself working from home or have been for some time and need a way to continue to get as much out of the time that you're spend, spending working, um, hopefully that list that we provide in the resource guide uh, will be helpful to you. Two more here, one of which is pictured, the other is not. Um, the laser keyboard, just a quick uh, definition of what this device does, it actually broadcasts a keyboard by way of lasers onto any flat surface that you can then use as a regular keyboard. Um, you can uh, attach it to your phone, and then that way, if you're needing to send emails or work um, on the go, even more so than uh, you would be when using a laptop, you can 
conjure up a keyboard kind of anywhere that you are and enable yourself to use all your fingers uh, when typing a message rather than just your thumbs uh, if you were working on your phone. Uh, and we have a list of some of the best laser keyboards out there as well uh, for your perusal that we'll share in the resource guide. I have to say I have one of these and it's like magic. I mean, the one I have is like the set, the size of a pack of playing cards and it talks to my phone via Bluetooth. It projects a full-sized keyboard onto any flat surface and then it detects where your fingers are and it amazingly, it does it flawlessly. I have to say one thing about the auxiliary uh, screens. Um, Elisa now has two auxiliary screens that she uses with her laptop, so she has a total of three, and yet she is still feeling a little hard done by because in the office she has four. So, <laughs> and the one thing she says about having four screens is it's almost impossible to ever find where your cursor is. <laughs> Not that it's a competition day, but I am running two machines here, so I have three screens at my uh, at my hands, and it, it comes in handy. <laughs> it really does. The more screens, the better. Um, I did mention, and, I, and I'll, I'll go over this briefly, but not pictured here, but in the resource guide, uh, it's a list of some of the best apps for helping enhance your time management. Um, the Pomodoro technique uh, used to uh, identify a, a period of time where you'll work and then set breaks immediately after those work periods. Um, it's a method of uh, time management that's become quite popular. We came up with a list, well, excuse me, we found a list uh, of some of the best apps that help you manage your time uh, in that fashion as well. We'll share that in the guide. Uh, next slide. And Yusuf, if I can just chime in real quick, one thing I'd love to request Please. from everyone listening right now is, you know, these are the ideas we came up with and there are so many out there. So if you have some hacks that fit into any of these categories, shoot them off to us in the chat or the questions we'll be monitoring. We can call them out in real time as they're coming in and add them to our resource guide if they're not on there. Yeah, thank you for, for bringing that up, Lauren. I mean, the resource guide is robust. Uh, it's almost three pages at, the, at last review, and yet we'd love it if it was double that length. Uh, the more that we can provide, the better. So on to other ways to save time, and here we noted that these are ways you can diversify your culinary palate uh, from your couch. Um, a number of different options to get food into your home uh, safely and efficiently during the pandemic. First off would be delivery. If you don't want to cook, uh, there are any number of services that will bring food ready to eat directly to your home. Uh, picture it as DoorDash, but we've got links to Uber Eats, Postmates, Grubhub, uh, pretty much any service that you could think of uh, that may be available in your area. If you want to cook, but don't necessarily want to shop for the items or don't want to prepare everything, you just want to go through the business of uh, putting everything together, uh, HelloFresh, Blue Apron, two services that offer prepared meals delivered to your door. Um, that you can then prepare, or excuse me, cook um, at your leisure. If you want to cook, excuse me, don't want to cook and want to have the option to feel less guilty about the food that you're eating, or maybe not even give yourself the opportunity to feel guilty, uh, services like Territory Foods provide chef-prepared, uh, responsibly sourced, gluten-free options. Um, low sugar as well, and, and any number of other uh, irritants are actually avoided in the uh, creation of their meals. So Territory Foods is one that um, we highlight in our resource guide. And then lastly, Daily Harvest, uh, the way we were thinking about it is you may not have time to cook. You may not even want to eat a meal, but you need to put something in your body. Um, Daily Harvest provides all the ingredients you would need to put together a smoothie uh, fairly rapidly uh, and then move on uh, with your day. So four different ways of um, getting food to you in whatever way makes the most sense given uh, your daily needs. This next slide here, um, you know, is, is timely because you know, throughout 2020, no matter where you live in the US, you or someone you know or love was likely affected by some form of a natural disaster. Um, the way that we're thinking about saving time in this capacity is making sure that you're prepared in advance uh, before one of those events takes place. Um, 
not pictured here, but of um, high importance and something that we featured in our resource guide, the San Francisco Chronicle actually ran a really robust uh, feature recently uh, about how to prepare and survive a natural disaster. And you can download for free a 28-page PDF um, with several resources uh, listed throughout, including what you might put in an emergency kit, uh, technology and various apps that you, you might want to have handy and downloaded to use before disaster strikes, um, tips on how to get your financial and insurance documents in order, which we'll talk more about in just a moment, uh, tips for making a disaster plan at home uh, for you and your family to, to follow, and how to ensure that your pets are safe, how to get news in the event of a disaster, and many, many, many other subjects. Uh, so we highly recommend reviewing that list uh, and making sure that your plan is in place. Um, pictured here on the bottom left, an emergency kit, and we actually provided a link to a sample one of these devices uh, in the resource guide, uh, one that provides lighting, a radio, a charger for your smartphone, and several other uh, features. And then, of course, a first aid kit. Everyone should have one at home and certainly be uh, prepared in that respect uh, to be able to care for your loved ones or for yourself uh, if something should happen. I should mention, I actually own that device on the left. <clears throat> and it has a built-in battery. It, you can pre-charge it, hold a, a really large charge uh, so it could be used to charge cell phones and other devices. One thing to remember during an emergency is that typically cell towers are still operating even when landlines are down. Uh, and so that becomes the primary form of communication in an emergency, uh, but only if you can keep your cell phone charged. So this has a very large built-in battery. That crank that you can see is a generator that you can use to, to recharge the battery, which what's difficult to see, but the top of that handle actually has a solar cell on it, which will also recharge the battery. Um, I, you know, I've been playing with this for about six months now and it's not very expensive and it's just really an amazing device. So what I did, we have a bag that has some basic dog supplies in it so that in an emergency, if we have to flee our building, we're going to grab the dogs and we're going to grab the bag. And I have that, that emergency charging device in the bag. So I know that that's always going to be with us because I'm never going to forget the dog bag any more than I would forget <laughs> the dogs. Right. The, uh, the bottom right half of this slide focuses on planning related to your insurance needs and your estate plan. And I think it goes without saying for our clients who are listening in, uh, insurance reviews and insurance planning, and of course, a review of your estate plan and any estate planning needs that you may have. Part of our standard offering uh, as financial planners and our financial planning um, process for all of our clients. Um, for any of our other friends who may be listening in at the moment, we'll just say that um, we believe the financial planning process touches every aspect of an individual's life, certainly including uh, their insurance needs and their estate plan, and we engage in a robust review uh, for all of our clients uh, in those two realms. The resource guide includes a couple sample reports uh, to give uh, a bit more flavor and a bit more description uh, to how we serve our clients in those ways. Uh, and by all means, any questions that come up uh, throughout the presentation or after a review of the resource guide and those sample reports, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And I'll just say one more thing about the uh, insurance summary and the estate summary. Uh, for those of you who are clients, I'm sure you, you may recall that we maintain a summary of all of your insurance coverages, who the carrier is, the breadth of the coverage, what you know, what's covered, uh, and that's all available on your client private page. So if you were ever required to evacuate from your home and you didn't have immediate access to your insurance documents, all you would need is internet access, access your client private page and there'll be a list of every insurance policy you own there uh, along with the, the carrier and, and other relevant information. And likewise, Dave, in the estate planning realm, we keep copies of all of our clients' estate planning documents on file. In addition, we note where the originals are kept so that should you need to access the originals um, in response to a disaster, we'd be able to direct you in that, uh, in that way as well. And Yusuf, just to jump in, we had a question and a comment come in. So I'll just address those real quick while we're on the topic. Um, one question Perfect. about where is this wonderful resource guide you keep referencing? 
we will send it to you. As soon as we're done with this webinar and we have the recording ready, we'll send you the recording and the resource guide and it will be posted on our website so you can come back to it anytime. So look out in your inbox. And then one other update just on the insurance front from one of our friendly experts on the call noting that if you're in a FEMA disaster area uh, with respect to signing up for different insurance coverages, you are actually granted extra time to enroll in Medicare and many of the Affordable Care Act plans. So that applies to the, the humans who are applying and also their caregivers. So I thought that was a great tip in that insurance section and maybe we can add that to the resource guide as well as a note. Brilliant. And so moving on to the next slide here, ways that we thought of, uh, or excuse me, life hacks that we thought of that enable you to save both time and money. Uh, and so first off, um, Instacart is the featured grocery delivery service here, certainly not the only one. Um, Whole Foods Market and many other services uh, have been getting a lot of run these days. Uh, we thought it was interesting that this could be a way to save time. Certainly, you don't have to do the grocery shopping yourself, uh, although maybe helping to coach or manage your shopper um, takes up a bit of time, depending on uh, your experience. Um, Saving money, however, you can't put random things in the cart once you've submitted your list and sent it out to the shopper. So those impulse buys uh, that you might otherwise uh, have to deal with if you were shopping in person, um, using a grocery delivery service kind of takes that option away from you preemptively. And I'll throw in another one because we use it all the time. Uh, if you shop on Amazon, I don't know if it has to be Prime or not, but um, because Amazon owns Whole Foods, you can have your grocery delivery come from Whole Foods. And uh, we've had yep. incredibly good luck with that one. The, uh, the middle area here is dedicated to laundry services. Um, I don't know that we're generating more or less laundry than we were prior to the pandemic, but it sure feels like the laundry never stopped <laughs> in our home. You may feel that the uh, experience is similar at your home. Uh, to the extent that you want to take a break and leave your laundry to the professionals, uh, services like Rinse uh, are out there, not just for dry cleaning, uh, but any other uh, clothing item that might need to be laundered. And then the final section on the right, is similar in theme to the previous slide, more of a planning ahead and, and saving money preemptively. Uh, taking care of yourself physically, um, well, it improves your health in the, uh, in, the, in the present, but also can reduce your risk of illness in the future and ultimately reduce the cost of uh, taking care of yourself down the line. We've felt that there's been a huge focus on um, self-care uh, specifically in physical care throughout the pandemic. And so some of the things that we wanted to share in this space were ways that you can work out, exercise at home for free. Uh, the resource guide includes links to uh, yoga, specifically yoga with Adrian, her YouTube channel. We happen to have a couple fans uh, on our team. Um, Lisa, does, Lisa, Lisa does that every day. She loves it. Yeah, Adrian's great. I'm a big fan as well. Um, Ways to work out at home, the best workout equipment, tips for, um, excuse me, lists of the best fitness trackers if you want to uh, keep a, a track of, of all your fitness statistics, uh, and on and on down the list. I'm going to cut myself short here just in the interest of time, um, but just note and, and reiterate all of the resources on the resource guide will kind of help you explore this realm um, as much as you want. And Yusuf, just one more comment we got from one of our attendees here. Purple Tie is another laundry service that does really well. So we'll add that to the list as well. Perfect. And I think that does it for me. All right, so now we're going to go into uh, some talk, talking about some learning and still saving time. So still on the theme of saving time, which is great. And we'll have another poll here. What is your preferred method for obtaining knowledge? And here in this option, you can select multiple options here. So if you have a few that you really like, let us know. And then you may have heard before, but at Yes Ki Bui, we believe that learning fuels potential. And so like all of you on the call today, we're always seeking out educational opportunities, trying to learn about the world around us, both inside the financial planning profession and outside. 
and learning about passions and interests. So today I'm gonna to share with you a few ideas for hacks to, to be able to learn quickly and efficiently and in ways that are hopefully enjoyable. We've got a lot of votes coming in here. Lots for news outlets, books, podcasts, across the board. We're very diversified in our learning approaches. All right, so news outlets are the top here, followed by books, then podcasts, then social media, and then other. Uh, for anyone who said other, would, I'd love if you could type in the chat or the question box what your preferred method is, and we'll make sure we note that out as we see it. So I'm gonna go into a few things here, a few hacks or the main hack on our next slide. And someone just commented YouTube videos. That's a great one. That's a really great place to go look for different learning, learning opportunities and different topics. There's so much on YouTube. And public radio, another great one. We'll actually talk about some stuff from NPR in here. And so the first hack here is to go for short learning sessions. Uh, we're all busy. We all have a lot of wonderful things going on in our lives. And even though it seems like it's not possible, if you're anything like us, it feel, you feel busier these days, even sheltering in place than you may have been before. And so sometimes you don't have an hour to dedicate to sit down and read the whole newspaper back to front or front to back, I guess, would be the better way to go. And so there are different options that you can use to kind of hack your time and still stay up to date on what's happening in the world, but do so in smaller bite-sized chunks. And so on this slide, we'll talk about newsletters and podcasts, two things that I definitely use in, in terms of life hacks for me. So on the left there, you see the morning brew and the skim. And these are two examples of newsletters that come to my inbox every morning. Um, the Skim is a newsletter about current events. It takes probably five to 10 minutes to read. The Morning Brew is very similar. And I actually wrote down in my notes. So the Morning Brew's tagline is, become smarter in just five minutes. Get the daily email that makes reading the news actually enjoyable. Stay informed and entertained for free. And so I think that's really, really kind of highlights what their purpose is, to let you stay informed with five minutes of reading every morning. And I know Yusuf is a dedicated Morning Brew reader every morning. It's a great newsletter. Um, and one of my favorites is actually the New York Times morning briefing. So that's in my inbox every morning as well and something I try to read every day. And one thing I wanna emphasize is that is my preferred source of newsletter in the mornings, but every news source out there has their own newsletter. So whatever your preferred news source or news outlet is, you can find their newsletter and sign up for it. Um, and the New York Times has over 50 different newsletters alone that you can subscribe to about news, economics, media, lifestyle, opinion. So there are a lot of options out there. Uh, I looked at NPR as well, and they have a lot of newsletters available to you. So the hustle is another one that we really like that's focused on business and tech. If you're interested in kind of keeping up on what's going on with Google and Apple, they're, they're usually the top stories in the, in the hustle. And again, there are so many different options out there. Some people are, are commenting too. We have Bloomberg, Five Things You Need to Know for Your Day is another one. Um, political newsletters and magazines are other good ones you can sign up for. And surfing the net and taking classes, which we'll come to later. Someone read my mind. And so the other one, and again, in the, in the resource guide, we will send links to you for all of these different newsletters we're saying and some of the top 2020 newsletters uh, lists that will show you how to how to sign up for those basically you go to the website you type in your email you hit submit and that newsletter is in your inbox every morning or every week if it's weekly and if you can't find it i actually did a test of this the other day if you can't find your news outlets newsletter easily on their website just google the name of the newspaper or news uh, producer plus newsletter so i searched san francisco chronicle newsletter and the first link took me to the San Francisco Chronicle Morning Fix, which is their daily newsletter. Very easy to sign up for, easy to get into your inbox every day. The other one, something that is a big hack I use in my daily life is listening to podcasts. And before I get into listing some of the podcasts that I love, some of you may be thinking, what is a podcast? Or I've heard of a podcast, but I don't know how to listen to them. Uh, they're very new and they're certainly popular now, but they're not necessarily something that you just automatically have on your phone or on your computer ready to listen to. So there are a lot of different podcast apps. If you have an Apple device, an iPhone, iPad, uh, or a MacBook, 
go to the app store and download. You can download Apple Podcasts. It has a purple logo and you can listen to all of your podcasts for free on there. There are also other apps. If you have an Android or a Google device, there's Google Podcast. And you can also listen to podcasts on Spotify. So Spotify is generally used for music streaming, but they also share a lot of podcasts on the app. Um, and one of the things actually that I was listening to earlier today that I love on Spotify is called The Daily Drive. It was created for commutes and it's a mixture of podcasts and the music that you listen to most frequently. So it switches back and forth. You get five to 10 to 20 minutes of a podcast and then three or four songs and it goes back and forth and it's actually really entertaining. Now, most of us aren't commuting much more these days, but you can still listen to it in the morning, maybe while you're having your coffee, getting ready for the day, or you need a break or you're out on a walk. Um, so those are really great options. And again, just to reiterate, the New York Times and the Daily, those are my preferences. Those are ones I go to, but there are thousands of podcasts out there. Uh, according to Reuters, there have been 12, more than 12,000 new news podcast episodes this year alone. So I'm confident that you can find a podcast from your, your source of choice. But they're not all about news either. Podcasts span all different genres and topics. You can learn about history, medicine, culture, language, pretty much any topic you can think of, true crime, comedy, sports, it's all out there. So if you just get creative and go searching for podcasts on topics of your choice, I'm confident you can find some that you enjoy. Um, I wanted to share a few examples. So if you're into fantasy football, my husband's favorite podcast is the Fantasy Footballers. It's a group of funny guys who enjoy their, each other's company. They've been best friends for years and they do in-depth podcasts about fantasy football and who you should and shouldn't put in this week. And he really enjoys it. Um, if you're not as into fantasy football like me, they also have a comedy and entertainment podcast called The Spitballers that they did as a spinoff. And it's family friendly, it's really funny, and they do similar things to fantasy football. So each episode they have a draft of a certain topic like you would do a fantasy football draft for players. One of the recent ones we listened to was the best road trip snacks. And so they go in order and they draft their road trip snacks. And at the end, there are four different or three or four different lists. And they actually put those out on social media and they get votes from their followers and whoever wins gets to brag the next episode. So it's a lot of fun. Um, we have a road trip coming up and we've been saving episodes for a long time to listen to those on the road trip. Uh, so. There are a lot of things out there. I think the biggest tip for podcasts is finding something you're interested in with hosts that you enjoy listening to and episode lengths that you know work for you and what's what's happening in your life or the t amount of time you have at that time to listen to something. Um, something on that else point about go time. Go ahead, Lauren, was, go ahead. Yeah, this, so everyone is reading my mind. This is fantastic. Um, someone mentioned you can also listen to the podcast at a faster playback speed. And so it's, it can sound weird at first, but it also can get you through a longer podcast if you're able to listen and comprehend and digest at that faster playback speed and you don't have as much time. So that's a great one. All right, so on our next slide, one uh, another hack is to really engage with the content you're digesting. So you don't, if you're gonna spend time learning or learning about whether it's the news or something you're passionate about, don't be a passive listener ask yourself questions, initiate conversations with people around you who may be listening to the same podcast or thinking about the same things, revisit the content or bookmark key points. If you hear something on the podcast, maybe you're in the middle, you're, you're listening to the podcast, but you don't have time to do further research, you can revisit it at a later time. And one of the wonderful things of technology these days is that we can use that technology to remind us. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I like having to-do lists. If I try to leave my to-do list in my head, it's not gonna happen. And so one of the ways that I find really helpful is to use Siri, and my phone's here, so hopefully she doesn't actually activate on this, but you can use Siri to make notes and reminders. Again, this is on Apple products. If you don't have an iPhone, if you have an Android, or another phone or a different computer or even a smart home uh, device, you can use Alexa and Google. And so on the phone, you say, hey, plus the name. So it may be, hey Siri or hey Google. And, or oh, I think it's okay Google. And if you have the Amazon Echo, it's Alexa. And so you would say that, and then you would ask your, your virtual assistant to make a note for you or to set a reminder. And so we have links in this resource guide for a how to set up Siri, how to make a note with Siri, and then how to actually go find it in your notes app on your phone. 
and how to make reminders. So for example, if I need a reminder to do something on Saturday because I wanna revisit an article I was reading or a podcast I was listening to, I probably need a reminder, not just a note. And so I can ask Siri to remind me, you know, at 10.15 on Saturday morning, remind me to revisit that polling statistic that was shared in the daily podcast this morning. So again, works across all devices, not just iPhone, but that's the easiest one for me to share because it's the most familiar. And then most importantly, I think we wanna make learning fun. Um, we have a lot going on these days and sometimes it's a great outlet to listen to these podcasts or interesting songs, or we'll talk about books in a minute. And so make learning fun. So I think the biggest life hack that is used in my household is this leisurely multitasking. And so this is the act of listening to one of those podcasts while you're doing something else. And oftentimes multitasking isn't really advisable. They say it's not possible. It's not truly getting more done when you're doing things that require intense brain focus, um, two things at once. But going for a walk, walking on the treadmill, doing your housework around the house, gardening, sitting in the sun or sitting in your window, staring out at the beautiful view and watching the birds, you can definitely multitask during those times. And so my husband, it's his favorite way to listen to his podcast is while he's on a walk or run or while he's doing stuff around the house, like folding laundry or putting dishes away or cleaning. He's always got his Air, AirPods in listening to his podcasts. And so it's a really, I think that's a, a big hack in terms of having those efficient ways to learn and to, to explore more of your passions while you're also getting other things done. Similarly to podcasts are audiobooks. And so audiobooks are exactly what they sound like. It's, a, it's the current version of books on tape. And these books on tape are available on your smart devices, on your computer, and you can listen to many books on tape or on these audiobooks. And so there are different apps that we'll share with you. One of them is Audible. So you can download audiobooks from Amazon, play them directly on Audible on the app, and you can buy the books through Audible as well. Uh, there are other ones called Audiobooks, and then Google Play Books is another one. And there are many apps that can do this. These are just the three of the most popular ones. And so again, while you're on the treadmill or out for a leisurely walk, sitting around gardening, whatever you may be doing, you can be listening to these books. Um, they're also great for long drives, as long as you're listening to a riveting book, not something that's gonna put you to sleep. And similarly, we may be missing out on our book clubs. I know Lauren is a big book club member. She loves her book clubs and has been missing those in-person get togethers. And a lot of book clubs have gone virtual in the times of the pandemic. So there are celebrities who have virtual book clubs, Reese Witherspoon, Oprah, Amy Adams, Jennifer Garner, a bunch of them where you can join their virtual book clubs. And there are many more. So we'll have a list of a few there. The one that I found really intriguing is called the Silent Book Club. And they used to get together in person and read in silence and then share afterwards and they've moved virtual. So the first half of this Zoom book club meeting is actually sitting together in silence, reading whatever you're reading at the moment. And then the second half is devoted to sharing what you learned during your reading session. So I thought that was a great way to still have that personal interaction and book club and be able to do so virtually. Um, so there's another note here, Scribed service is another audiobook option, $9 a month. Uh, so that's another great one we will add in. So we've talked a lot about reading or listening to these podcasts and these newsletters. I've signed up for a bunch of them and I know I can't get to them all every morning. Sometimes my morning starts faster than I anticipated or I just don't have, I just don't have the, the oomph to get through them all that morning. Go back to them later during the day. Use that technology to remind yourself, okay, I wanna go back and read this, this um, article before bed or listen to that podcast. So just another way that you can continue to have some downtime throughout your day and, and read those things and not squeeze them all into one time in the morning. One of my favorites I'll go through quickly is similar to these apps where you can find all of these audiobooks and podcasts. There are a lot of game apps out there for your phone, your iPad, your computer, things you can play online. And they're not all silly games. They're not all brainless, silly, funny games. There are some really good brain, brain games, things that are word games or puzzles, things that actually train your brain. Uh, one of my favorites, part of my morning routine is the New York Times mini crossword. They do a daily mini crossword, absolutely free on the crossword app. It's something, it's funny, I look forward to every morning. Um, it's not the first thing I do, but sometime in the morning I do the daily crossword and I race myself to see how quickly I can get it done. And really any game that you can think of that you like, 
there's an app out there. So you would go to your app store on whatever device and just search for the game you like, whether it's backgammon or solitaire or puzzle games or different word games. There's a lot of stuff out there. And if you're interested more in the brain training, so games that are actually neurologically studied to help improve the strength of your brain and focus on different parts of your brain, there are apps for that. Um, the most popular one I know of being Lumosity. So that's a great one. You sign up for lots of different brain games. Think about you know the old matching games you used to play with cards where you turn one over and then you'd have to keep figure out where your matched cards were and then pick them up and make your pairs fastest. So a lot of games like that. And the last one I'll share is taking a virtual class. So we may not be able to go to Sur La Tabla and take cooking classes right now or go out and take classes at the local university, but there are so many people who are being really innovative in the virtual class space. One of the most popular right now is Masterclass. So it's a subscription service and you have access to thousands of different classes on every, many topics from some of the best people in the world. So things from art and history to cooking and cocktail making to sports to, ed to education to neuroscience and health. And they're taught by some of the most famous people in those realms in the world. So think Serena Williams, Gordon Ramsay, Neil deGrasse Tyson, RuPaul, a lot of people. So there are a lot of big names on there and a lot of different options. There's also a website, and I know I'm sharing a lot of information here. As a reminder, it's all on that resource guide. You don't have to try to get it all down. Another one is Khan Academy. It's all free, a lot of lessons. And this is very similar. Someone was sharing going to YouTube videos. A couple of people shared that. Um, and it's very similar to going to YouTube. So there are videos similar to YouTube. They're usually animated either with a person talking and writing on a whiteboard or using a computer program to write out math problems. It's geared towards the younger learners in our life. So things like math, science, coding, physics, economics, but anyone who's interested in those, in learning more about those topics can go take those courses for free. And the last one I'll share on that, on that note is like, it's called Udemy. And Udemy is another one where you can take thousands of different classes. They have over 13,000 different courses starting at $13 a piece. From things, to, from things like SQL programming to MBA education to project management training. So there are a lot of options out there where we can still be taking virtual classes, even if we're not able to go somewhere in person, but if we've got an interest, we can find something to learn. And one thing I'll add, I, I had a couple more notes in here. Um, Coursera is another great learning app that can be used similarly. And then back to um, Yusuf's point about birthday freebies, Someone shared that veterans also often get many free things on Veterans Day. So that would be another one to look into. Fabulous. Thank you, Lauren, for all of the different ways to boost our brain. So the last set of life hacks we want to share are all focused on ways to help you pursue your live big life. Um, so those who have been a part of the Yeski Bowie community for some time have likely heard us say the phrase live big dozens and dozens of times. But for anyone who is new, when we say live big, we essentially mean living life to the fullest. And we often accompany the phrase uh, live big with another one, which is it's about the size of your life, not the size of your wallet. And one of the beautiful things about the live big philosophy, in my opinion, is that every individual can have a different interpretation of what it means to them. So before we dive into these live big life hacks, we're going to do one more poll. And the question we want to pose is, what is at the center of your live big life? What's at the heart? What's at the foundation? What does it mean to you to live big? And we'll launch this now. Similar to the last poll, we'll let you select a few different options if you would like, if you can't pick just one. I got an email this morning from one of our clients who was telling me she was not going to be able to attend this live presentation because she was going to be wrangling her four and five-year-old grandchildren and she ended by saying that's my live big style perfect yes another word that we like to use when we say live big is that it's limitless every we believe everyone's entitled to a limitless vision for their life only you can define what that means uh, and in a few minutes we'll look into that too
lots of votes here. I love the engagement today. Appreciate everybody. All right, so we have love and family in the top. Health and wellness, not far behind. Passion and purpose, stability and security. And a bit of something else in there too. I'm curious to hear if you're open to sharing in the questions box. I would love to, to hear what that looks like for you. All right, so with that, we'll dive into the first live big life hack, which is to decide what's important to you and don't compromise on your values. And this is a big one. The poll we just reviewed, it provided us with a few different examples of values that might be important to you. Of course, as those who selected something else can tell you, there's plenty of others. And having the awareness to your personal values can help guide you towards the things that are going to bring you feelings of meaning and purpose and fulfillment. Um, and one exercise that you might find helpful in becoming more conscious of your values is this tool from Money Quotient called Investing Your Time and Energy. So this is a short worksheet that we will provide in the resource guide. It has a couple of open-ended questions to help you understand um, what brings you the greatest intrinsic reward, what gives you the deepest sense of meaning and purpose, um, and as a personal example to share. I recently completed this exercise for myself. I started with question one. I confidently had some answers to write down. I go to question two. I said, oh, that's easy. My Zumba dance classes, that's what makes me feel good and energized and relaxed. And then I reached question three and I thought, wait, is, is this a typo? Is this the same question? Um, and I noticed the difference. Question number two is asking you what makes you feel good. And question Question number three is what gives your life a sense of meaning and purpose. And it just caused me to reflect and ask myself, are those Zumba dance classes really uh, giving me a sense of meaning and purpose? And I don't think they really are, but at the heart of those classes are the aspects of fitness and confidence and community. And those are the things that do bring me a sense of meaning and purpose. So again, I encourage you to take the time to go through this quick exercise. Um, I think it's it's a fun way to, to reflect on what's most important to you. And when you've taken the time to reflect in this way, you can practice the next Live Big Life hack, which is to embrace JOMO, not FOMO. So some uh, acronyms here. While it's likely that you've heard of FOMO, which is the fear of missing out, um, and is really a form of anxiety, anxiousness in saying no to an activity or an event or an opportunity because of the fear that you're missing out on something or that someone else is doing something cooler than you. Um, while JOMO, which is a new term that I am learning and looking forward to embracing myself, stands for the joy of missing out. And it encourages us encourages us to embrace um, the pleasure of choosing what you want to do or not do um, to really make sure that you're feeling the most engaged and fulfilled in the ways that you're spending your time, since we all know that time is a valuable resource. So I have a few articles um, that I've listed in the resource guide to explore this idea of, of JOMO a little bit more. Um, and I think that that will help you to uh, reach your live big life a little bit faster if you're able to focus on the embrace the JOMO. All right, moving along, this one has become even more relevant given the pandemic world that we are living in this year, and that is to fully embrace today no matter the situation. And I've listed a few ideas here for what that might look like for you. Keeping in theme with what we've talked about here with the Live Big Hacks, um, keep in mind that some of these options might be intriguing and they might resonate with you and others might seem foreign or frankly boring. So be sure what does, be sure to do what inspires you. Um, but here are a few ideas that uh, you, a few different ways to live big from a distance given the world that we are living in. The first is to spend time in nature. 
Nature has the amazing ability to recharge our internal batteries and of course stay socially distant. Um, so consider taking an hour a week or whatever you can to relax in a nearby park, pick up a backpack, go for a hike, go for a walk, jump on a bike if you have one. Uh, the picture on the right is a picture of a friend uh, and me who uh, have taken up to biking on Saturday mornings. It's something we both really look forward to. Um, great way to connect in a safe environment. You can also choose the scenic route and just stop and enjoy uh, the surroundings just because for no other reason, but just because it's, it's fun to do so. Um, and a bonus life hack that I've included in here um, that I think nicely fits and connects with this one is to use more of your mental <laughs> camera. Another way of looking at this is really to, to put your phone down, to live in the moment and live in reality. And this is hard. Um, but as great as technology is, it has its downsides. And one of those downsides is living life through a screen. Uh, we're not computers, we're humans. So next time you feel the need to snap a photo and post online, maybe think otherwise. Put the phone down, try to enjoy the moment for what it is. Um, and I I think that will help you to get into a more live big uh, way of life. We're so hypnotized by that little screen. I, I had the experience a couple of years ago, two years ago when we were in Africa, of being in a truck and watching a, a herd of elephants cross the road in front of us. I mean, literally a few yards in front of us. And I thought, I have to film this. And I had to keep saying to myself, take your, take your eyes off the screen. The elephants are right here. But, but my eyes kept being drawn magnetically back to that little screen. And I can tell you, it was not the same experience staring at the little screen than staring at the elephants themselves. I mean, it's, it's amazing how much practice that takes. It and really does. And there's ways on the phone to set it up so that it'll tell you when you've reached, you know, whatever limit you'd like to put on it. Um, although it does also have the ignore limit for today little button there too so <laughs> and Lauren if I can just share one example I think we may have lost Lauren uh oh all right she's frozen so I'll continue and we'll get her back when we can so journaling more is the next uh, live big life hack to to explore um, and journaling has been shown to have a number of positive effects on your brain it boosts your mood boosts your memory enhances your sense of well-being relieves stress inspires creativity helps you with prioritization um, so a number of of great benefits there and there's a ton of different journals out there um, I personally use a fitness journal from the company called commit 30 that is the one on the left here um, and they have a uh, weekly calendar a space for reflection and goals and successes all related to a personal fitness journey I also learned the middle one they now have what they call a joy journal and you can chronicle moments of joy and gratitude which is a great practice to have there's also bullet journals which say that they are just as much a mindfulness tool as they are a productivity tool the options are really pretty endless um, so we'll include links to a few of our favorites in that resource guide yeah a friend of ours who has written a book on journaling, you know, pointed out something that I wasn't aware of, but it, it makes sense that you feel differently when you put your thoughts in a journal because it activates a different part of your brain than when you're speaking words or even just thinking words. Um, and so it's a way of, of exploring your thoughts with, with a different part of your brain than you otherwise would. Brilliant, yes. I agree in my experience that has been the same. Find calm in making art is our next hack. So this is for those who consider themselves more right-brained like myself. Um, there's a number of options out there now for virtual classes. And one that I'm going to be participating with, uh, participating in with my family next month is going to be hosted by a company called Paint the Town. Um, and they're located on the West Coast, but 
in this virtual space. They can go anywhere. Um, so they're going to supply, they'll have a teacher join us via Zoom, just like you're seeing here. They're going to ship us all of the supplies. We get to select our favorite painting or project, which for a group of 15 was a little bit difficult, but we have landed on one that we all agree on. Um, and I think it's going to be a great way to channel some creativity, make some fun memories together. Um, we're not sure that we're going to all get together for the holidays this year because of the pandemic. So this was, we wanted some way to all be able to connect and, and make, some, make some new memories. Lauren touched on this one a little bit in her section earlier with virtual classes, but uh, similar to virtual art classes, you've also got virtual cooking classes. I'm a big fan of the Sur La Table in-person classes and they have moved them online now. So you still get access to their expert chefs and you get to join their classes from the comfort of your own kitchen. Uh, and they'll teach you anything from night skill, knife skills to baked goods to full meals. I've done a, a class with risotto. I learned how to make risotto. That was a, a good skill to have. Um, so lots of options there. Um, Lauren, is this something we could do with our entire team? It is, yes. I was thinking the same thing. Great opportunity, both in the professional world and in and in your personal life. Um, so on the other side here, I have a picture of cocktail career courier which is one that we just recently used as a team for a happy hour event um, cocktail courier will supply drinks for an event they come in really nice packaging there you can see in the box um, they take the best recipes from the nation's top bartenders and they make these pretty neat kits that are just delivered to your home so they've got cocktails and mocktails and i think it's a pretty neat way to shake up your professional networking events or your Shake family up. calls. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Speaking of shaking it up, um, you know, Zoom fatigue and video, video conference fatigue, it's a real thing. So anywhere where you can add in a dash of creativity into those meetings, I think is helpful. Um, some easy games to play in a virtual space. I know I've played categories with a big group of friends. They have online, you can get all of the lists for categories. You can get a random letter generator so that you can play for those who are familiar. Um, there are also word generators like the one shown here. It helps you to play Pictionary or charades or catchphrase, gives you that uh, those words and you don't have to depend on you know, a physical uh, item to, to generate those words for you. You can also cook meals together. We've talked a lot about cooking. You know, one of our unofficial core values is eat big. So we like, we like to, to cook and eat here. Um, you can also attend online events, play trivia, read a book together. Another one that I've done is a scavenger hunt for items around your house. Uh, so we gave everybody 60 seconds to go collect a set of items, things like something yellow, a photo of your family and friends that's not on your phone, a memento from a vacation, um, something that you stockpiled in quarantine, some pretty fun ones. You only have 60 seconds to go grab it. And then we came back and all shared the stories behind those those items. So again, fun ways to avoid that Zoom fatigue and maybe make a few memories together. Some of us came back from that scavenger hunt out of breath. Um, I had to come up with a board game, which are stashed in our basement, and my office is on the top floor of our home. Uh, 60 seconds goes, uh, goes by pretty quickly. <laughs> it's fun. And the last one for those who are avoiding travel but still like to explore different cities and go on adventures, um, Airbnb offers a platform called Airbnb Experiences, which are activities that are designed and led by inspiring locals. Um, the goal of the experience is to be completely immersed in that guest's unique world, um, and you can do so in the comfort of your own home. So some of the the experiences that were listed on the main part of their website um, do a leopard safari in um, in Africa, attend a family magic show, learn some some magic lessons, baking French pastries in Paris, 
uh, discovering different cities and their street art, um, just again via the web, learning sign language through games. So um, similar to what Lauren was saying about the podcasts, if you can dream it, you can, uh, it's probably out there for you. So just some fun things to, to look into. We'll include a link again, of course, in that resource guide. So with that, we have reached the end of our Live Big Life Hacks. Before we close, I'll leave you with one final hack, which is to use your Yeski Buoy team um, to help you live big. We're here, from, we're here for you. We'd love to hear from you. We love to connect with you. Our mission is to empower you to pursue your Live Big Life. Hopefully you have received a bunch of good tips here. Um, and I will leave it to any of my colleagues too, if you'd like to, to wrap us up here. I myself will just say, thank you for joining us. We, we've enjoyed it. We love the fact that, that you all added some uh, additional resources. Feel free to mail, pardon me, mail, email. I mean, you can mail it if you want, but it'll take a while to make it to the list. Um, but email any uh, additional ideas you have. We, we, you know, we don't see any reason why the resource guide shouldn't get bigger. And just as the Live Big list has grown over the years, the, the, I think this resource guide could also. So have a great day. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.